So section five, dating dynamics. So there's a couple issues that happen during dating. So the co most common questions that we saw were one, what should I say? Two, what is he or she really saying? So behind the words, do they really mean that? Is there assumptions happening? What are the meanings behind the words? And am I really listening? Now the third one is a little bit harder. I call this wishful hearing. Some of us, we go on dates and we have different expectations and we hear what we think is happening, but it's not actually what's happening. So I'm hoping that in this section we can get into that decoding, the subtle messages, a lot of the issues you guys brought up at the very beginning, it's gonna be addressed in this section. So I solve these problems with something that I call dynamic dating, which is a very different way of thinking about dating. And this is basically using nonverbal to connect accurately, so you're seeing and hearing what's really happening, and deeply to make a much faster, stronger connection. So the very first part of this is decoding facial expressions. Now I love teaching facial expressions because I think the face is the window to the soul. So uh, this is my most, my favorite section, so I can't wait to talk about it. All right, this monstrous quote basically says that as couples who, couples who have trouble decoding their facial expressions and tone of voice have lower feelings of well-being in their relationship and greater feelings of depression. So the micro-expression, the facial expression, is incredibly important, not just when you're dating, but also for that second phase as you're building the connection. When you're in a couple, being able to read your spouse or your partner's face lets you avoid a lot of the miscommunications and fights that happen. So the microexpression is a very brief, involuntary facial expression. There are seven universal facial expressions, and they were discovered by Dr. Paul Ekman. He's who I got my training from. And what he did is he traveled to very remote tribes in Papua New Guinea, tribes that had never been exposed to anyone outside their culture. They'd never seen television. They had never seen anyone outside their culture. And he showed them Americans making facial expressions and asked them what facial expressions, what emotion are they making? And in their own language, they were able to accurately detect what expressions Americans were making. He also studied congenitally blind twins. These are uh, twins who've been, I'm sorry, children who've been blind since birth. And he asked them, he noticed that they make the same facial expressions as seeing children, even though they've never seen a face before. So we used to believe that when babies were born, they learned facial expressions by mimicking their parents' face. But actually we're finding out this is not true at all. We actually are genetically coded to make certain facial expressions. So across cultures, across religions, across sexes, you can read the seven major micro-expressions. Now they're working on more. Um, these are just the first seven, and luckily they're the basic ones, so they kind of cover all of our basics, especially when we're talking about dating. So before I teach you the seven micro-expressions, I want to share something called the facial feedback hypothesis. The facial feedback hypothesis looks at how quickly we recognize a face. And they found that in three one-hundredths, which is a very short period of time, in three one-hundredths of a second, our facial, our facial expressions, our muscles mirror what we see. So our brains recognize a facial expression before we even consciously see it notice that we see it. For example, in this study, what they did was they had people look at computer screens and they briefly fa flashed a, a micro-expression and they asked the person, what facial expression did you see? And they would say, I didn't even see a face. But they hooked their face up to electrodes and noticed that their muscles fired correctly. So even though they consciously didn't realize they saw a face, their m muscles mirrored it. So, the reason why this is important is because it helps us study facial expressions to know that without even realizing it, we are taking in lots of information from facial expressions. All right, so here's the first one. Um, and the funny thing about facial expressions is that once you make a facial expression, you also begin to feel the emotion. Facial expressions are the basis for empathy. So if you start to make this face, which I'm going to make you do in a second, you uh, raise your eyebrows up your forehead and you pull your mouth back, you will actually begin to feel a little bit afraid and a little bit anxious. So fear is when we raise our eyebrows up our forehead and we pull our mouth open as if we're about to yell or scream. So it looks like this. Right, that's how it looks. Very good, I saw a couple of you make it. And you, if you make it, you'll begin to feel a little bit afraid. Now, um, I wanna talk about some of the basics of fear, why we make this facial expression. So from an evolutionary perspective, this makes sense. Because if we see a threat, an object that's coming at us, or a person or an animal, 
What does our body want us to do? It wants us to get our eyelids and our eyebrows out of the way so we can take in more of the threat. So our eyebrows and eyelids raise up our forehead. And then we automatically open our mouth so we can take in oxygen if we need to fight or flight or yell for help. So these microexpressions have reasons why we make them, and this is why we make those fear facial expressions. By the way, fear comes up all the time in dating, right? You bring up a sensitive topic. Oh, tell me a little about your past relationships. Oh, um, <laughs> happy to talk about it. And they sit with sort of this deer in the headlights look. That is a micro expression of fear, right? You recognize that right away. Oh, I've, I've accidentally stumbled upon a sensitive topic. Anger. So anger is when you pull your eyebrows down your forehead. These vertical lines appear between your eyebrows. And usually you press your mouth into a hard line. You see anger also a lot of dating situations when someone crosses a boundary or brings up a sensitive topic. So you can say, you know, tell me a little bit about your ex. Uh, tell you all. No matter what they're about to say, you just saw the anger all over their face. So you see those emotions. And by the way, microexpressions are involuntary. So we make facial expressions without even realizing it, and we cannot control them. Um, the, the briefer they are, the harder it is to control. So people make these across cultures, whether they mean to or not. And that's why they're so accurate to be able to read, because we cannot control them. So um, again, the brows are pulled down. If you want to try it, you pull your brows down. You press your eyes into a hard line. Press your mouth down. Exactly. Don't do it for too long. You'll start to feel angry. Um, men also do what's called a chin jut when they're angry. It's a territorial behavior. So in a, in a fight, you, in a bar, you always know when someone's going to throw a punch. When the guy's like, he'll do this at another guy. It's a way of being territorial. So you also see this. I see it a lot in interviews. If you ask someone a question they don't like, they'll say, well, and they tilt their head back and their chin up. It's very close to that, um, that FU gesture, right? That anger gesture. So something you want to watch out for. You, stumbled into a sensitive topic. Um, another study here is that highly ambivalent women expressed a greater number of negative facial expressions. So ambivalence in women specifically is associated with the anger and the fear and the contempt, which we're going to learn in a second, those facial expressions. Happiness. This is one of my favorites, of course. So happiness is when you smile. You actually don't have to smile with your teeth. The smile just has to reach the upper cheeks. The only true indicator of happiness is not a teeth smile. It's when the upper muscles in your cheeks are activated. Only one in ten people can consciously activate those muscles. So you women especially are very good at this fake smile where they do this, oh, yeah, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> and they kind of like don't smile into their eyes. It's that really fake gesture. I think I have a video of a fake and a, a fake and a real one. You can see that that smile doesn't reach into their eyes. So if someone's talking to you on a date about something that makes them happy, but you see that it doesn't reach their eyes, you know that what you're seeing is not genuine happiness. So happiness is actually, it's not as important when you see it. It's more important when you don't see it, when you should be seeing it and you don't really see it there. Contempt. So contempt is the simplest of the microexpressions. It is a one-sided mouth raise. So all you do is you raise one side of your mouth, either side, and it's that contemptuous microexpression. The reason why contempt is scary is because a lot of people perceive it as a half smile, but actually it's the, me the meaning of, a con of contempt is disdain or hatred. You see it a lot with people who are sarcastic. They'll throw that contemptuous facial expression out. Now, contempt, I think, is one of the most powerful facial expressions in the dating world. And this research was by Dr. John Gottman. Dr. John Gottman is a marriage and family counselor. He's a researcher up in Seattle. And what he did is he wanted to see what is the greatest predictor of divorce. That's what he wanted to see. So for 30 years, he studied couples. He brought couples into his lab, and he tested everything he could think of. Urine samples, hair samples. He interviewed them. He interviewed their friends. He interviewed their kids. He interviewed their parents. He actually w put them into a mock B and B and filmed them all weekend as they interacted all weekend. I mean, you name it, he researched it because he was looking for over the course of 30 years which of those couples would divorce and which of them wouldn't. After 30 years, there was only one indicator that indicate that said that a couple would get divorced, and he found that contempt. In the initial intake interview, if one member of the couple showed contempt towards the other, 
he can predict with 93.6% accuracy if that couple is going to get divorced. So now he can watch silent video clips of couples speaking. And if he sees contempt, he can accurately predict whether they're going to get divorced in the next 30 years. And that is why micro, this micro expression is such a powerful facial expression because it is a true indicator of a deep disrespect. Contempt is a very powerful emotion, right? If you are already at contempt, it's very hard to get respect, love, kindness in a relationship. So it's very important to watch out for this one-sided mouth raise in the beginning of a relationship. Now, remember, if they're talking about someone else, that contempt is not necessarily directed at you. It can be directed at the subject that they're speaking about. But you, what you want to be careful of is, is that the contempt is directed at you or in your relationship. Surprise. So surprise is when both of our eyebrows go up our forehead and our eyelids open and we drop our mouth down, right? It looks like this. That's surprise. Um, the biggest question I get is the difference between surprise and fear. So the easiest way to tell the difference is surprise is when we have rounded eyebrows and fear is when our eyebrows are straight across our forehead. So here's a um, quick video of how that looks. So surprise versus fear, right? You can see it in the eyebrows, right? Rounded eyebrows versus flat eyebrows, I can show you. So surprise looks like this and fear looks like this, right? Flat versus rounded. This one is really easy to spot, and the reason why it's important is because if you ask someone a question like, um, do you want to have kids? And they're like, oh, um, that's a very different emotion than surprise. Fear and surprise are very, very different emotions, and they show on someone's face. <laughs> Shit, you're laughing. It's yeah, a big I'm one. I'm scared and surprised. You asked me that question on the stage. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, it could have been like the 10th date or something. Yeah, or 15th date or 30th. <laughs> Date. I don't know the timeline for that question. Um, that's a different course, Shay. That's a different yeah. course. I'll put research into it. I, I will put that into research for you. All right. So, disgust. Disgust is when we crinkle our nose. It's actually the, the face we make when we smell something bad. So, we crinkle our nose up and we, um, we raise up our lips so our teeth show. So, it looks like this. Ugh. A lot of people ask me, I don't care if my date doesn't like their food. Why does it matter if I want to see disgust? People show disgust when they're asked preference questions. Typically, they make disgust when they're trying to think of a polite way to say that they don't like something. So, for example, you can say, so, uh, what do you think of extreme sports? Um, uh, <laughs> right, and you see that disgust. Because usually people do this when they're like, I don't like that at all, but they're trying to think of a polite way to answer that question. So disgust comes a, up a lot around preference-based questions, and it's a great way to see the truth behind what someone is saying or about to say. And you can say, and I'm very transparent with these microexpressions, you can blame it on me. You can be like, you know, I, I took this course from this human lie detector, and she talked about microexpressions. Are you sure you really like extreme sports? I don't care if you don't like them. Right, you can you can always blame it on me. I'm very transparent when I spot micro expressions on someone's face. The last one is sadness. So sadness is the so sad, right? It's the hardest micro expression to fake. It's incredibly difficult to engage the sadness micro expression on purpose. So I practice. It looks like this. You pull your inner corners of your eyebrows in and down, um, and then you pull the corners of your mouth down into a frown. So it looks like this. Right? Very difficult to engage those muscles. Um, so when you see sadness, you almost always know that it's genuine. If you bring up a topic, people confuse sadness with anger. So if you're talking to someone about a sensitive topic and you see sadness, this is actually a great opportunity to connect. You know, to dig a little bit deeper, offer support. People often mistake it for anger or fear and they go on a different line of questioning. So this, when you see sadness, it's a great opportunity to offer support and empathy. All right, so what's really important here, the basis of this, why it's so important for dating dynamics, is that nonverbal cues are the visible sign of inner emotions. They're what tips us off to what's happening inside. Seeing them is one part, but responding to them is the second part, right? If you see a fear microexpression or a sadness microexpression, respond to show, to show, I hear you. 
I'm listening to you, I want to know where you're coming from, is the greatest way that we can show empathy towards another human being. And that's why microexpressions, I think, are so powerful. And they build the connections so much faster. It also helps you with all those questions of what are they really thinking. Um, microexpressions answers a lot of that. All right, a couple of examples, the most common examples I see in dating scenarios. Tell me about your last relationship, anger. Do you want to have kids, which of course we would never ask in the first 30 dates. Contempt, <laughs> right, 30, 40 dates, 50 dates. Uh, do you want to have kids, contempt, right, that can answer a question right away. <laughs> uh, I recently got tested. You, that happens. It's a very common one, right? If you, if you ask that question, and you never want to ask this question over text, Right, you always want to be able to see someone's face. Oh my God. <laughs> you always want to see someone's face, right? A little fear is going to tell you a lot about that answer, right? Like, don't go on the date. <laughs> don't go on the date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't get to bounce chicka wow wow section seven, which we're coming up on, right? All right. Um, so another fun quote for you is: Couples who make errors in decoding facial expressions report less well-being in the relationship and greater feelings of depression, which we talked about earlier. This is repeated over and over again. When you cannot read a face, you have more misunderstandings and less well-being. So the question is: Why facial expressions? Now we talked about how this uncovers hidden emotions. Um, it also increases deep gazing, right? So I talked about earlier trying to deep gaze with someone, noticing their eye color. The other way that you deep gaze is by just trying to read their micro expressions. It's a great way to make sure that you're really looking at someone. You're paying attention to their eyebrows, you're paying attention to their mouth, you're looking at their whole face. Dynamic and responsive listening, which we're going to talk about in the next section. And lies versus truth. So we're not doing human lie detection in this course, um, although I will do a couple of videos in our bonus section on human lie detection. But the basis for human lie detection is microexpressions. Because we cannot control them, because they are across cultures, it is the easiest way to tell if someone is lying to you if their face and their words do not match. That is the basis for lie detection. A little action tip for you is if you are unsure of a microexpression, so like let's say that you're on a date, we're going to a bar later, I, I promise everyone a round of drinks, you see a facial, a facial expression you don't recognize, the easiest way to know it is to actually mirror it. So if you mirror a facial expression and tap into how you feel, the facial feedback hypothesis works. You do begin to feel that emotion. So when I'm in an interview or a negotiation with someone and they make a face I'm not sure of, I will mimic that and then tap into, oh, I feel, I don't under, I'm, I'm confused. I, I can feel that I, something's off, and then I'll try to go into further explanation mode. So at the worst, if you can't forget the seven, this is the easiest way to figure out what they're showing you. All right. Number two, dynamic expressiveness. So expressiveness is the basis of charisma. Now, I have a whole course on the seven steps to influence. It's free. You're welcome to check it out. And one of the things I talk about is expressiveness, because charismatic people know how to be expressive. And the reason for this is because when we see people's hands, face, and body act dynamically, so they act out their emotions, they show emotionality, we see them as warm and agreeable. I think there's actually a, yes. So people who use a greater variety of gestures are seen as warm, agreeable, and energetic. People who remain still are seen as cold and analytical. And that's not all bad. In the business environment, sometimes you want to be seen you know, if you're in a legal profession or a financial profession, you know, sometimes it's good to be seen as very analytical. But in the dating world, you want to be seen as warm and agreeable. Sometimes I see that people who are very stern and analytical in the business world have trouble transitioning when they go into a date. The easiest way to do this is with dynamic expressiveness, which I'm going to explain. So dynamic expressiveness is being expressive in response to your date. So it's not just using jazz hands and being really gestury. <laughs> I would not recommend that. It's, oh my god, I'm here, woo. Right, like that would not, that's not what I'm recommending. That'd be pretty good. <laughs> be <in>. <laughs> You'd be in? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I mean, you win some friends, but that's not what I'm recommending here. I'm recommending um, dynamic expressiveness. So using these in response to your date, the conversation, and feelings that are happening. So the first way that you can show expressiveness is vocal emotionality. So MIT Media Lab did a lot of research on expressiveness. They actually made people wear these sociometers. They measure someone's expressiveness vocally as well as hand gestures. They were, were to walk around for a few days and people rated them with the whole thing. What they found was that men were more interested in women who varied their voice tone. 
vocal emotionality is incredibly important for women. We talked a little bit about voice tone earlier when um, Bridget asked about high or low. What's more important is not using the question inflection and using emotionality. So that's that when you're explaining something and you feel an emotion, to put that emotion into your words. When you're dating and you answer the same question over and over and over again, we have the tendency to say it like it's a script or it's memorized. This sends off all kinds of red flags in your date's book. They can, they, it sounds like a lie, whether it is or not, because it sounds like it was rehearsed or practiced. So it's really important that when you're answering something, and hopefully it's honest, you add that emotion into it no matter how much you've said it. That's, that's for women especially, that's one of the most important things you can do. The other area that I want you to add dynamic expressiveness is in the body and the face. So hand gestures. Our hands are our trust indicators. When you first look at someone's body, the first place you notice is actually the hands. It's not the butt or the legs, even though those are the favorites. Those aren't the first place someone looks. The first place someone looks is our hands. And the reason for this is because it is how our brains keep us safe. If someone has a weapon or a rock back in uh, caveman days, we had to know if we had to defend ourselves. And so we still do this subconsciously. We look at someone's hands to see, can we trust them? Can we let our guards down? So using gestures, always keeping your hands visible, and that's why the launch stance is so important, not having your hands crossed. For women, don't tuck them into your purse. Right? A lot of women will hide their, their hands in their purse. Keeping your hands visible out of your pockets, that's why that's so important, is because it's a way of having expressiveness. You can also do this with facial encouragement. So this is, this is a little bit hard to do, so I want you to practice it with your friends first. You can practice it with me all you want. Is When you see a face, I told you to mirror it if you don't understand it, that's actually a great way to show facial expressiveness. Is when someone's showing you happiness, be happy with them. You know, get excited for them. A lot of the times I'll see couples where the man is completely stony faced. He, he leaves his facial expressions completely neutral and he looks disinterested and disengaged. When actually he's thinking, wow, that's great. So men especially to pump up your facial expressiveness in mirroring the person that you're speaking with to show that you want to connect and engage with them. You want to celebrate with them with their happiness. Partners who are more non-verbally expressive also had a more secure attachment style, and this happens with both genders. So both genders who expressed non-verbally, especially the back and forth, that dynamic expressiveness, had a more secure attachment style. There's three different kinds of attachment style, which we're not going deeply into this in this course, but secure, avoidant, and um, secure, avoidant, and nervous, anxious, anxious attachment. So secure is the one that makes you feel like you can trust the other person and connect with them. Secure couples typically have high levels of nonverbal expressiveness. A little ninja tip for you for my men. So um, the palms up gesture is the universal sign for I'm not hiding anything, I'm open. When I teach negotiation courses, I teach people to always show this when I lay all of their argument out on the table to say, this is what I got. I'm not hiding anything. It's the nonverbal sign for I'm all here. Men who use the palms up gesture have greater success with women because they are perceived as having agreeable personalities. So hopefully you all have agreeable personalities. If you're wanting to show the woman that you are open, you're connecting with her, and she's telling a passionate story, another way you can do this if it feels weird to mimic her facial expressions is you can say, wow, that's so great. You can show your palms to her. That's a, fa a hand gesture you can use to show that you're with her, you're agreeable. Again, spectrum here. I don't, you know, jazz hands are not so good. I also don't want your hands hidden. We want to fall somewhere in the ideal zone in the middle, what feels comfortable to you. Typically, women actually err on the high side. We're a little bit too um, too much with our gestures, and men fall on the low side. So to compromise somewhere in the middle with those gestures so that they're purposeful, that's what you want to do to show charisma. All right, the third aspect of dating dynamics is dynamic mirroring. So let me just briefly talk about what mirroring is. So mirroring or mimicry is when we copy the nonverbal of the person that we're speaking with. We already do this subconsciously with people who we like. Um, so we unconsciously mirror those we like. This was found in a study of best friends. They brought best friends, it's like a really sweet study. They brought best friends into the lab and they videotaped them. And they found, and they videotaped them and they also hooked them up. They um, tested their heart rate, their sweat rate, their blink rate, and their breathing rate. And they found that the longer those friends had been best friends and the closer they were, the more they mirrored each other physiologically as well as nonverbally. 
They sat the same way. They tilted their head the same way. They blinked the same way. They, bro they had the same breathing rate. They had the same heart rate. So we do this without even realizing it when we really connect with someone. You see this on a really good date where the couples look identical. They're, they're sitting the same way. They're talking the same way. Interestingly, this also works on the flip side. Researchers went into an experiment and they mirrored the participants' body language during a survey. They were doing like an intelligence test and the researchers mirrored the participants. And they found that when the researchers mirror the participant, they were rated as more likable. So people also rate you as more likable when you mirror them. Now, this is a spectrum, right? I don't want you to go into a date and copy and mirror everything that they do. Um, it's a very subtle mirroring, and I want you to use it purposefully. First, it's very important to only mirror neutral or positive body language. Okay, so if they're, if they're like sitting like, like this, like looking horribly bored, they're blocking, they're crossing over, they have, so don't copy that, right? What you want to mirror is when they're showing positive engagement. When they're showing confidence, you, want, you can mirror that confidence. And again, this is only if you choose to do this. It's just another way of showing connection. And you can do it in a couple different ways. You can do it with posture. So if they're leaning forward, you can lean forward. Um, you can do it with pacing. So um, I actually use this in business all the time. I speak very fast. I don't know if you noticed. So I have, when I speak to people who speak on a slower pace, I've noticed we, we, it's like we're speaking on different levels. I'm speaking really fast and they're speaking really slow. So I will slow my pace down to match theirs just to show that I'm on the same page. That like, I'm on the same page, I want to speak on their level. So you can do that with pacing as well, especially for women fast talkers. If you have a slow talker, it's always good to just get on their level. Volume and tone. So if you're speaking in a very high volume um, and they're speaking in a very low volume, trying to meet somewhere in the middle. And facially, as we talked about, mirroring those facial expressions. A, it helps you with your charisma. B, it helps you with um, the mirror connection. And C, it helps you understand what their face is saying. There are three reasons that we mirror. And I don't like to use this as a manipulation trick. I've seen uh, persuasion artists use this as a way to manipulate people. I like to mirror for three reasons that are more authentic. First, is it shows that you're willing to adapt to them, right? In a relationship, a lot of it is compromise. And so if you're showing them, you know, I want to speak at your pace, I want to be on your same page, it's a way to show respect. Second, is that you want to interact on the same level. You like their level. You're open to their level, right? It's a, a way of showing that you're into them. And lastly, that you're on the same page. So it's a great way of just authentically building, a different way of building connection. This is um, a chart that I made. I made it, that should kind of show, <laughs> can you tell with all of the lack of numbers in the axis? Yeah, I, I, wasn't, I didn't do math in college, that was not my thing. But this is a chart that I want to show you that when you're on a really good date, your emotional levels match your partners. As they talk about something they're passionate about, you get passionate with them. When they talk about something that makes them a little bit sad or upset, you show them empathy and get sad and upset, upset as, as um empathetic with them so you don't necessarily have to let them vent or get angry with them but you can show them that you feel them so that your levels actually match the other person that's what a really what happens on a really good date um, there was a, a graph that was similar to this in a study on empathy where therapists who mirrored their patients when they when they hooked them up to machines that tested their heart rate their sweat rate and their breathing rate it ended up looking something like this where the therapist actually begins to match physiologically what their patients were experiencing. All right, before we go on to the next section, do we have any questions? Oh, wait, 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 wait for the mic. <laughs> so I recently went on a date with somebody mm -hmm. who was very non-expressive. Uh-huh. And then after a couple dates, I came to the conclusion that he wasn't very emotionally engaged or mm. intelligent. Mm -hmm. Is that reasonable? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, he wasn't showing it, it very yeah. little. Yeah. So there's two reasons why people would, could be non-verbally expressive in the face. Um, first, it can be nerves. So nerves can cause, they're so, people are so careful about what you're saying, what they want to say, that they actually will leave their face completely blank until they feel an intense emotion, then they'll show a brief micro expression, but then not show anything else. So nerves can shut down facial expressions. The other thing that can happen is if someone doesn't have a lot of emotional depth, 
what can ha which can happen, especially if they're cut off from their emotions, from childhood things, they will not show very much at all because they don't aren't feeling very many intense emotions. So it's actually a great way to gauge someone. If on the first date you're like, okay, I noticed that I'm showing facial expressions, I'm not getting much back. Going on a few other dates and making sure that you watch out to see if you get more, then you knew it was nerves. Otherwise, you can see that emotional depth. So it's a great way to test someone's emotional depth right away, especially if it's matching. Thanks yeah. for the validation. Yes. <laughs>